Um, so title is, as you see here, not all those who wonder are lost. And it's really about how API security, I think, is, is the catalyst for forcing traditional SecOps, which is the runtime uh, protection focused people to have to start to shift smart or shift left, however you want to use the term, but to focus on APIs in a different way because they have they have uh, you know their own unique way of doing things um by way of background like dan said i'm a sales engineer for the west for a uh, piro um but most recently i worked as a technical solutions architect at worldwide technology covering app api and workload security so everything from like the um, um ddos and and waf wap products all the way down into um, secure software supply chain aspm SCA, SAS, DAS, I asked all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> before that is just so long ago, nobody even cares anymore other than F5, which I worked at recently. And I know one of my my former colleagues is uh, is gonna be talking uh, or has already talked today. Um, so uh, great, great company doing some really cool things there too. Um, married for 20 years and, and we've got some cats and we love to travel. And if you didn't figure out from the title, I'm kind of a reading nerd and love uh, J.R. Tolkien. And so that's where I took the, the title for this talk. So I want to give a just a kind of a brief background uh, or, or let's say set the stage um, for, for uh, why this is so important. Um, you've heard all day, you know, API usage is exploding. Um, Digital transformation of applications is driving some of this. Akamai, so uh, I believe this is 2019 is the exact uh, year that this this came out, uh, said that 83% of the traffic traversing their network was API-based traffic. Now, the kicker of this all is, is a lot of mobile applications really are just graphical skins for a bunch of API calls that happen on the back end. And then there's also applications themselves um, as they move to microservice architectures are using APIs, um, not only to call in outside resources, but internally within the applications between the different pods and whatnot and, and aspects of the application. And so we're seeing that more and more um, um, uh, organizations are also leveraging APIs. So you, you have, for example, in the healthcare industry, you have open API standards that are happening there. And the same thing is happening in banking. It's why uh, it's easier now when you move from doctor to doctor, from, um, you know, the hospital, from your GP to the hospital, they can have access to your records. That's all happening through these open APIs that are happening. And then in addition, um, we've had talks about, you know, how APIs are being used in connected cars and in AI, um, all of that stuff is being driven by APIs. And so you're seeing this incredible uh, increase in, in the leverage of APIs. And like I talked about the, the most web applications now are using APIs. Um, and as they continue to transform uh, based upon like microservice architectures, you're going to see an increased leverage of APIs being used by those applications. So all these numbers um, are not static, they're growing. And, and, and I think everybody kind of knows this. Um, one of the challenges though, is there's not nearly enough security personnel and talent out there. Um, Gene Kim is most famous for actually having said, and then I, I, I actually read a a. Uh, a book recently from 2014 that beat Gene by um, um, for what five years, uh, talking about this issue of there were an incredible amount of devs, and then there was a much smaller amount of DevOps personnel, and then SecOps was like you know it's like a hundred to ten to one. I'll say that at my time at WWT when I was talking to customers and customers from some of the biggest financial organizations down to you know small to medium businesses the numbers were much, much more extreme than this. Um, and, and every time I mentioned this, the people in the know would start to chuckle in the room. And I, and when I would see this, I would ask them, so I, I see you chuckling there. What's the real number? Because I know this has changed a lot since, since Gene said this. And what we were finding was it was four or five or 600 to one. And so as this continues, um, you're going to you run into a, a, a critical mass where runtime SecOps can no longer keep up with the pace of innovation and development that's happening. And it's straining things. And you're seeing this in the tax that many of the talkers have been talking about so far today. 
And so <clears throat> this really is a challenge and it's forcing SecOps to finally start looking at things um, differently. And so, you know, why is API security going to drive the this shift smart, this look at the code, this new way of, of having to um, deal with this? Well, there's a bunch of them. Um, first off, complete code to runtime API discovery. So API discovery is one of like the three main tenants of traditional API security. Um, so discovery being one, uh, number two being posture management. So now that I've discovered my APIs, what is the posture of those APIs? How vulnerable am I? Am I, am I seeing the attacks coming in? Am I vulnerable? All that kind of stuff. And then finally is remediation. Uh, and remediation can take many different forms, but it has ranged anything from actually blocking um, requests to more commonly what's being done is the submission of, of tickets into stuff like Jira or ServiceNow and other ticketing systems or, or leveraging um, Slack and other things like that to, to let the devs know that there is this problem, it's been detected and whatnot. Um, the discovery portion of, <clears throat> of this has been done traditionally in a plethora of ways. Um, it's been attaching to API gateways. Uh, it's been um, attaching to um, WAF, WAP product or, or maybe even uh, uh, application delivery controllers, load balancer type stuff, or as part of <clears throat> the ingress controller in your Kubernetes stack or um, the more... Um, the uh, let's say the more um, modern way of doing this or the, the the future state of where things are going is probably going to be evpf uh, because you can you can get a, a great amount of context from there before encryption happens but whatever way you're doing that you're reliant on knowing where those apis are right so um, with gateways that's great for everything that's behind your gateways to be honest i have not met a customer yet when they're being honest, who believes that all their APIs that the, that are being used and externally facing are truly going through API gateways. Um, so that's not necessarily reliable. So you can add in things like WAF um, to gain uh, additional insights in there, hoping that that maybe some of the ones that aren't behind API gateways are, are being protected by your WAF or your, your ADC type thing. Um, and if you're using stuff like Kubernetes and whatnot, you can you can gain access to there. But the ones you don't know about are still falling through the cracks. And so one of the first steps to to doing that is to dive into the code and to start looking at the repos. And most, you know, there are ways to go around certain corporate standards, but I'd say most developers are using corporate repos for everything. That's how they're doing their um their development amongst the team. And so it's a great place to find those APIs that you don't know about. Um, and that, you know, as uh, as Colin before me said, somebody knows about that shadow API, but not necessarily the people that are uh, charged with securing it. The other is to close the gap that you're going to have between that runtime alert and the developer. Um, so it is great if you can find that there is issues with your APIs. Um, it's great to be able to categor, uh, categor uh, I'm going to lose, not be able to get that word out, categorize, um, those vulnerabilities that are found. And then, um, then to be able to remediate, to say, send those information. Now at runtime, you, you definitely will be able to figure out, you know, which API endpoints you have vulnerabilities, what so many of those vulnerabilities are. And you'll be able to attach into, let's say, ticketing systems and or um, stuff like Slack or Teams to be able to alert somebody. What it doesn't do is get down to where in the code is that problem and who the developer was who's responsible for that code that checked in this issue so that you can speed up remediation, right? And so that's what we're talking about. And, and, and a big problem for customers is how do, I, how do I, one, find it once I found it, how do I get it in front of the right person to be able to actually remediate that? And then of course, prioritization of API risk now taking those risks and putting a code context into it to see uh, that you get a, a much more enriched view of what your API vulnerabilities and weaknesses are. And so uh, this was something, and I, I, uh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't give um, credit to where credit is due. Um, anybody who does anything is oftentimes standing on the shoulders of giants. So I need to give 
proper shout out. Uh, I believe originally this design was uh, one of my colleagues at WWT, Todd Hathaway's. Uh, Todd's a brilliant dude. Uh, anybody in the API space, um, or especially now AI, which he's really focusing on, um, Todd's a wealth of information. I've learned a ton from that guy. And then much of uh, the updates and um, whatnot to this since Todd's original was stuff that was worked on by myself, but also um, my former boss, Clint Huffiger. Dude's an absolute stud on API and AppSec stuff. Um, so I, I, I definitely want to give proper shouts out to to uh, my two former colleagues. They're absolute studs in this space. Um, but the way we saw stuff is in two things. I think Colin kind of kind of called it something different, but we're 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 going at it at the same in in the same vein. And that is, we looked at it as secure and defend. Um, defend being your runtime security. And this is where uh, I think there's a lot of discipline and rigor in companies. And I know like everybody will have, you know, oh, we could do this better. This, Of course, you know, nobody's perfect. Um, but I think there's been over the years, a lot of discipline and rigor on this side of the house. So people understand, you know, CDNs, they understand DDoS and um, the problems associated with it and how to deal with it. WAF and WAP, I, you know, I, like I said, my history comes from F5. I've been talking WAF and WAP since 2005. Um, it's great to see it finally really picked up in the past, let's say, seven, eight years that people really started to understand. And PCI had a lot to do with that, getting the word out there. And it's still an absolutely critical piece, right? Um, RASP is pretty well known at this point. SSL visibility is another place. You know, how do I see all this encrypted traffic? So we need encryption to protect stuff, but at the same time, we need to be able to break it open and see what's inside there. These are all spaces that are really well known. The only place that is fairly, let's say fairly new in this is um, API discovery and protection. Um, and that's part of API security. I loved what Colin said that there's no one product somebody can sell you for API security. It is a layered defense in this space. Um, API discovery and protection, this being uh, what traditionally people think of as API security. And that's, um, you know, you can see the logos on there. They're all great companies doing great things. Um, but there, this is on a runtime protection space. Secure side of things is now where we get into the software supply chain and the code side of the house. And all of these play an important part in your API security. And that's whether you're doing um, AppSec orchestration and correlation, uh, or I believe a lot of people are referring to this, uh, um, you know, that, that um, these guys are doing, doing the orchestration of all your security tools. Um, you're seeing ASPM. Um, you know where I'm at now. Um, that space is is doing a lot of what API security is doing it from an applic overall application standpoint. That is building an inventory of all your known applications and repos out there, ensuring that the scanning and proper procedures uh, are are being done, and also trying to prioritize the risks so that you can focus on what your biggest risks are, the ones that have the biggest impact uh, moving forward. Um, that can give you the context that runtime can't have from the code. And this is where we're starting to see some real um, interesting things happen where uh, code based uh, code side of the house is being integrated in with runtime to give you that code to runtime. So all the way through the um, coding, the build, the test, all of that stuff on the secure side is happening and it informs what happens once that API goes into runtime and that runtime information can be fed back into, um, into the code side of the house and, and along with the scanners help to refine where that risk is so that companies can actually start to build out um, API, uh, like an API program that has security built in right from the get-go. And so this is kind of the viewpoint that that we looked at it, and I think you're seeing a lot of people start to adopt. Uh, you know, CISOs don't need to know more than just what's happening in their runtime. They need to understand what's happening in the software supply chain, being driven by things like uh, PCI DSS v4 and the requirements that it now has around um, application security. Um, programming and training and whatnot. And then within federal space, you have stuff like the secure software um, uh, development attestation form that CISA put out for anybody doing um, or selling software 
to the federal government. And these will have a trickle effect um, down. So like the goal is really to have um, a, a, a like this nonstop loop of what's going to happen, right? So from a dev's perspective, um, having IDE integration uh, and scanning of the code as the, as the developer is doing their pull requests and they're submitting their code back in, that it's getting scanned automatically and, and to see if there is anything in there that may potentially uh, be adding additional risk and providing suggestions back. Um, Copilots also are a place that uh, can help with um, code generation um, and also can speed time for code development. Once the code has been um, submitted, then you know SAST and IAST is uh, uh, where the play, you know where things are. Scanning that's happening there. Um, build test QA. Now that's where we're going to get into some really interesting stuff. So um, uh, Colin was mentioned like DAST. He di he didn't find it terribly um, effective on APIs, and I, I tend to agree with him there. Um, IAST is trying to solve for that problem, but it has some interesting limitations. Um, interesting stuff happening in the space of a more or, um, code oriented look at, at APIs is doing automated uh, pen testing or what I would call like uh, um, API DAST. Uh, so APIs, because of uh, the fact that they are built and in, in kind of rigid in their design in that you have um, specs to be able to follow that have been built into how this, how this uh, API was developed and define all the endpoints and what should be there taking that and then using that to test the APIs. So think like DAS, but within, like it has these nice uh, nice boundaries to, to work within and testing to ensure that you don't have problems of so some of the more tricky, uh, tricky to catch API vulnerabilities can be caught in this way and almost no other. There's, there's other ways to do it, but it's, it's really effective to catch it here. And oftentimes more cost effective if we can eliminate as much of the vulnerabilities and as much of the risk before we get to runtime. And then finally, you have you have your artifacting. So understanding um, your your software composition and any vulnerabilities introduced by uh, open source code and and and, and dependencies. Um, S bombs are of growing um, importance, especially in, around regulations. And of course, Swagger files. Uh, or OAS files when it comes to your definitions for your APIs. And then at runtime, so, um, you know, I, I think I like the, the the term shift smart better than I like shift left. And that's, that's really because um, shift left almost gives you this idea like, oh, we're shifting away from runtime and doing it only in code. It's no. Um, I, I think the shift left, it, it, it serves its, it served its purpose, um, but shift smart is it. It's a matter of prioritizing where you're focusing your resources on to have the biggest impact to reduce the greatest amount of risk uh, and do it in the most cost effective and time effective manner possible. And so nothing in runtime is going away. Runtime is extremely mature. Uh, so this is where you're going to have your runtime API discovery, your posture management, um, your gateways, which play a uh, uh, an important role in there, and then your WAP and, and 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 your other devices that are in line, you know, your DDoS protections and whatnot, uh, and all of this needs to feed back into um, this, so you have this continual feedback loop of security things that are found, getting back to the right devs so that the devs can update that code, fix that vulnerability, get it tested, ensured through uh, testing um, before it goes to prod that those vulnerabilities are fixed update all your S bombs and stuff like that at back out and runtime. And this is, this is kind of the goal. I, there's not a lot of people there, but there's, there's a million little steps along the way. So really with respect to this, like final thoughts on this are, um, I think API security because of its unique nature and some of the, the ways that, it, that it interacts with things and the way that it's built and, and the fact that it's built to a, a framework or a framework uh, that defines what it what it does is built, that it has some very unique things that are forcing SecOps. It's, it's much harder to defend them, for example, in runtime. Finding BOLA and BAFLAs is extremely difficult to do in runtime. It's, it's a very subtle attack that typically looks really, really normal. Um, you have to have like a, an insane amount of, of understanding of the application 
at the runtime to be able to do that in runtime. And it can be done, but it's extremely difficult and, and costly. And so if you can um, do that before it gets into production, you saved yourself a lot of time and aggravation and heartache trying to defend that. So that's kind of what I'll leave you as your final thoughts. I, I really think that API security is what's going to finally propel the overall app security market to be a uh, have a lot more focus on it and then to also mature it and, and give it the rigor I think it's been needing for a long time. So with that, I will I will yeah. shut thank up you. a little bit. Thank you so much, David. And and hey man, I love the love the hoodie. Thank you for representing. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, um wasn't unnoticed by uh our good friend Dana. <laughs> Dana, you if you didn't get one, shame on us. Um all the speakers should have got one. And in fact, I think uh I can sneak peek into our our next speaker, Kenna. Maybe uh, maybe it looks like you're wearing one too. Um, so yeah, I've got some reading to do. Dana Dana sent me uh, one of his articles about using AI to go after APIs. Mm. Uh, I haven't had a chance. Like it's it's literally one of the tabs that's up on the screen here that I'm yeah. going to be looking at this afternoon. So Dana, I appreciate the interaction oh. online. I love it when people challenge my ideas. I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, um, <laughs> and well. so. I'd love it if if anybody wants to, they can please challenge me, hit me up on LinkedIn. I'd well, love to be challenged. Follow Dana's, um, um, is it uh, Volscan, I think is, is the, mm -hmm. the site. Um, fantastic. Um, they all just just get his, his weekly email. It's fantastic, full of stuff. So anyways, I knew I could count on Aubrey to come up with something <laughs> spicy here. Uh, what are your thoughts here? Uh, you want to touch this one? I will. Uh, yeah, sure. I was in that space a long time. Aubrey, great one, brother. Um, and and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your stuff too. It's true. Uh, Next gen firewalls are great. Um, they have their, they have their absolute purpose and they're amazingly good for, um, outbound protection, uh, next generation firewall. Interestingly, in a lot of cases is more about defending what's leaving your organization. Um, it does traditional firewall stuff, the blocking and tacking we're all used to there, but what it didn't have was that deep context that you get with WAF or rebranded WAP, right? So, and that is the policy that knows exactly what the applications is doing so that you can stop um, attacks in their tracks because it, it violates the policy that, that of this application. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. And that's that extended into APIs. Obviously that makes sense. It's running on web-based technologies and it's, it, it's a kind of a vital part of that tool chain that you need to really secure APIs. I loved how Colin put it, you know, it's like, there's no one product that can solve them all. It's yeah. defense in depth uh, with respect to APIs. Let's get a few, uh... I appreciate you leaving some time for for questions. Um, Alicia, hey, how are you? You got a you had some some comments, I think, right? So I'm gonna throw these up here in case it sparks a, a thought or a, or a comment. Um, same as I don't AI bombs. Is that a new thing? There's a there's a bomb for everything now. It seems like uh, it's one of those terms. I you know there's a lot of stuff about s bombs that's. There's there still needs to be a lot of work done and and like standardization that has to happen before I think it really really takes off. But regulations are happening uh, that are kind of forcing that point, and, and so it it's an important part of any appsec that's going on. It'll be very important part of, for example, the um, attestation form you'll have to submit to the federal government when you're mm. when you're selling hardware that has software on it or, or software to them. So yeah, S bombs are important. Um, I don't know how important they are directly to API security, like specifically, but to a general app security is very important. Let's people seem to resonate with your shift smart. Um, you know, maybe, maybe someone needs to go get that domain, um, here from Mario, uh, instead of shift left or shift smart, I'm personally using expand left. Mm -hmm. Biggest yeah. problem for me is the false impression that we are shifting to the DevOps and the pipe, all the security responsibility. Yeah, that's a really interesting point, right? Like, is shifting left mean like it's no longer a security's problem? It's it's the dev. Yeah. Um, what's your take on that? So I, I agree with them. I, I love that term, expand left. That's a great way to put it because, like I said, that stuff on the right, that is that is the the defend side of the house. None of that goes away yet, right? Um 
that's that's there to defend your estate in runtime and be your last line of defense. Your first line of defense happens before any code is written, and that is that is during the design stages and incorporating security as part of that. But security has a vital point across the entire SDLC, right? There's a ton of things along that pipeline that has to happen. So I love the term expand left, shift smart. I don't think we have a great term, but I, I agree with you. That it, and I think that was uh, uh, one of my old coworkers at WWT's major complaint about shift left was like, yeah, it kind of makes everybody say, oh, we're just turning here. That, yeah, it's definitely not the case. Yeah, and, and I like your, your comment about Baffla and Bola and mm -hmm. being able to detect that in runtime. I mean, look, you know, I work for a vendor. Um, we have a lot of us do, right? And, and we make wild ass, you know, uh, uh, you know, declarations, right? But finding right. Bola in runtime, I, it, it just seems, I mean, everyone says it can be done, but I don't know how. Um, that traffic looks completely legitimate, right? Payloads right. are good, the data types are right. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know, any any additional thoughts around around your comments there? So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm in agreement with you with the caveat that I believe, and, and, and this is how, this is kind of how WAF did um, web app protection, right? So you would build a positive policy. So there's like negative and positive policies in the WAF world. The positive policy was you would have devs or, or like a dev QA team that really knew the application, use it and send nothing but legitimate traffic to it. And then that would use, in that case, like ML, but now you have AI ML um, to do that kind of stuff. And you can potentially do it there. Data lake, like, okay, if I have a big, vast idea of what those transactions look like, then I can look for patterns and use, use AI ML type stuff to be able to look for those things that look like a deviation. But you're right. Everything in it looks 100% legit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it makes it, it makes it awful. Authorization is a really tough one to be able to pick out, like in real time runtime. It's really hard. Well, and why not find it ahead of runtime? I think is is right. kind of the moral of the story, right? And and for right. that, we need better things than our our traditional um, DAST tooling and and the like. Well, listen, yep. um, I want to get ready for Ikenna. Um, he's in the wings, um, and so David. Thanks so much for, for being